Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor, yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the video, guys, we're going to be talking about the horrible incident that happened yesterday in Austin, Texas, in the United States, where a Southwest Boeing 737-700 reported having uh, struck a human being on the runway just after landing. Now, how can something like that happen? what kind of security pro- protocols are in force in order to make sure that that doesn't happen and what can we as pilots do in case we see something on the runway when can we go around stay tuned wind 31016 all right so what happened yesterday was that uh, an Southwest flight 1392 that went from Dallas to Austin in the United States uh, had a completely normal flight. They came in and they landed on runway 17 right in Austin. And just after landing, the crew reported that they had seen a person and they possibly had hit that person just after landing somewhere in the touchdown zone. The aircraft rolled out normally, uh, taxied into gates. There was no damages to any of the people on board, so any of the crew and the passengers. However, the left side um, engine nacelle was found to be severely damaged. And later on, they found a deceased male person on the runway. So how can something like this happen? Um, The reason I'm even taking this up as a video is because I was going into Aviation Herald and I was reading all of the comments and there seemed to be a lot of misunderstandings around what a pilot can actually see and what a pilot can actually do in a situation like this. So, first of all, you have to understand that we, the pilots, we will have to and we must be able to assume that the runway we're about to land on is completely free of obstacles. That means free of other aircraft, uh, free of vehicles and free of airport personnel and unauthorized people. All right, because there is precious little that we the pilots can actually do when we are in the landing phase. We're coming in with a you know a 60 ton aircraft at 260 kilometers per hour and the thing that we are focusing on is making sure that this aircraft lands where it's supposed to be and that we can start decelerating and safely exit the runway. That's our job, that's our focus. And this safety and security is maintained in a couple of ways. First of all, everyone that is on the maneuvering area, which we are calling you know, the part where the aircraft are maneuvering, so the uh, taxiways and the runways have to be in contact with air traffic control. That goes for every vehicle, it goes for every person, and it goes, of course, for every aircraft. So in order for you to, to be able to move around, you need to have clearance to do so. Uh, and that way, air traffic control can make sure that we don't get any runway incursions by vehicles and aircraft, for example. All of the personnel that is working anywhere on the ramp or close to the runway needs to have a reflective vest on. And that's gonna be important in a a while, okay? Um, In order to secure that there's never any threats of unauthorized people on the maneuvering area, all of the airports are surrounded by high fences. But what you have to understand is that these fences can stretch for miles and miles, right? Tens of kilometers, because a, a big airport has an even bigger surrounding area. And these airport parameters are tend to be guarded by airport police that regularly go around, make sure to, to you know, check the fence, to see that no one has tampered with it, for example, and to look for unauthorized people. Uh, and also, in some cases, you have uh, video surveillance of these fences. So, why did I talk about reflective vests then? Well, this incident happened at 20... 23 local time in Austin. Um, Local time of sunset is 2014 at the moment, which means that this flight probably did its approach during dusk and the beginning of darkness. Now, as we're coming in, um, we are starting to see the runway. The the primary thing that we'll be looking at, if I'm the pilot flying, for example, is gonna be the approach lighting, 
which is lights that are kind of directing our view towards the runway. And then you'll have the poppy lights that will indicate whether or not I am high or low on approach. And in some cases, on some bigger runways, you also have a touchdown zone lighting area, which is basically lights that flush into the runway that shows where the touchdown area is. You also tend to have a center line um, light indicating where the center line is. So this is what we see, right? In daylight, you will have your peripheral vision. You will probably see things. So if someone is running towards the runway, um, you might be able to see it depending on how focused you are and how turbulent it is and how much you're working. But in darkness, you will not see anything around the runway area. You will just see the lights and possibly if someone is working with a reflective vest as we're coming closer and the uh, landing lights are starting to illuminate the asphalt, then we might be able to pick up someone running around or walking around with a reflective vest. But without the reflective vest, we won't see them. Just like if you're out driving a car, when it's dark, you will just see a very limited area where your headlights are pointing. It's the same for us when we're coming in. We have the main landing light, which is shining down in the direction of the aircraft. And then we have the runway turn-off light that kind of shines out a little bit out to the sides, but they're not that strong. So as we're coming in over the threshold, the landing lights are going to start illuminating the asphalt. It makes it easier for us to determine the flare. Um, but it's not made to sit and scan for threats around the, the runway. That's not how it works. And it cannot be. It would be like you driving your car and constantly scanning the sky for falling things. Like you concentrate on where the threats potentially are and then you have to put your trust in the fact that the runway, the approach is clear, right? That's why we have air traffic control and that's why we have rules and regulations around who can move around on an airport. So what about a missed approach then? Um, what if you actually do see a person on the runway prior to landing? Well, the fact is that I have made a complete video about how and when we can do a go around. But um, in short, you can execute a go around, which is where you abandon the approach and you know put trust on and start going around for a new attempt at any point, even after landing, until you have selected the trust reverses. So this means that theoretically, if you're coming in, landing in darkness and you see something further down the runway and you think that this is a major threat and you haven't selected the trust reverses yet you could execute the go around take off again and avoid the threat All right but like these pilots reported this incident happened just off the touchdown in the touchdown zone area so this means that this aircraft would have traveled with about 140 knots so about 260 kilometers per hour. They would have just touched down, seen the person, and then it would have hit it. Okay, they would have had very, very limited time to actually do anything to stop this from happening. Okay, um, if they would have chosen to go around, they probably would have hit the person anyway. And if they, which we don't know yet, if they had started to use reverse trust, which we do immediately after touchdown, as soon as we get main gear touchdown, we select reverse trust. And as soon as you've done that, you are committed to the landing. In that case, there is no choice. Now, if you want to see how a rejected landing looks like from inside of the cockpit, I'll give you an example here. So a rejected landing is when you have passed your minimum and you're just about to land, but for whatever reason, ex choose to execute a go around. Here you go. 300, approaching minimums. Check. Check. 200, minimums. Continue. Check. 100. All right. 50, 40. Go around. 30. Flap 15. 20. Set, go around trust. Go around trust. Set. Gear up. Positive rate. Mentor 360 going around. LNAV. Check. LNAV. Flaps 5. Speed check. Flaps Fla 5. Set. Flaps 1. Speed check. 
Two in radius for missed approach. Two, uh, and uh, flaps one set. Flaps up. Speed checked. 1000 to level. Check. Right, so that's what we do in case we have to do a go-around. But like I said, in this case, it's very likely that they didn't have the choice of a go-around or that even if they did go-around, it wouldn't have made any difference. They would have hit that person anyway. So what about maneuvering then? What kind of maneuvering can you do once you're done the runway to try to avoid an obstacle? Well, the fact is that a, uh, an aircraft is not a Formula 1 car. It is not built to do high-speed maneuvering. This is why the runway is straight. All right? We're coming in with a very high speed, so 260 to 280 kilometers per hour normally. We're landing with maybe 60 tons. That's an enormous amount of energy. The only thing that we want to do is keep the center line and start using reverse thrust and brakes in order to decelerate. And then once we're down to taxi speed, generally around 10 knots or so, then we can start making large corrections, as in large um, maneuvering. Now, we do have the possibility to do a little bit of maneuvering. Um, at those speeds, that's mainly going to be done by the rudder and by the rudder pedals. So if you land and you see a deer, for example, or in this case a person, well then you can make a slight correction with a little bit of rudder, which is exactly what the pilots in this case said that they did. But the point here is that if you make a huge correction, as in if you try to avoid this person, you put a lot of rudder in, well then you could lose directional control of the aircraft completely. And our objective during any landing is always to try to safeguard the aircraft to do the landing as safe as possible. If that means that an obstacle suddenly comes up and we're gonna have to hit it, that's what we'll do. You wouldn't try to roll off the runway in order to avoid a person or a deer or whatever it might be that has popped up on the runway. That, that we just cannot do. So in this case, I am guessing that the guys probably did put a little bit of rudder in, try to get a little bit off the center line softly to try to avoid it. Uh, but the person still managed to hit the, uh, the left engine nacelle. Um, and as you can see, by the way, I'm gonna show a picture now of the damage that came from the impact. So if you are sensitive, um, maybe you can skip this part, right? There's no gore here, but it is, um, you can see where the person impacted the engine. And here comes a picture of that. So as you can see, um, there's some quite substantial damage to the left-hand nacelle, um, and that's understandable. Uh, it was a male person, like a, a normal male person would, a, would weigh maybe around 80 kilos or so. And if you hit something, weighing 80 kilos at 260 kilometers per hour, it is going to cause a lot of damage. And obviously it is not survivable by the, uh, the person in question. So, so why did I do this video then? Well, as I was going through Ave Herald and I was reading about this incident, then I saw in the comment sections that there was a lot of misunderstandings about what we, the pilots, can and should do in a situation like this, and also what the onboard system can do. So uh, one, one comment that I saw was, well, couldn't they have seen this person on the weather radar? And the answer to that is no, that's not how a weather radar works. First of all, when we're coming in on approach, if we have the weather radar going, the, it would have set, been set to uh, pitch up about five degrees, because what we're interested in using the weather radar for is weather. So to see if there's any cumulonimbus clouds, any storm clouds or something in the mist approach area or in the approach area. If we would tilt that down in order to see what's you know ahead of us on the runway, the only thing we would get is bright red ground returns. It would just be big red on the navigation display, it wouldn't tell us anything. So this it's impossible to use the weather radar for that. Now another thing that came up was TCAS. I've made videos about TCAS, guys. You can go and have a look at that. There's a lot of videos on that subject. But the main thing here is that in order for TCAS to work, you need to be two, up, two 
vehicles, in this case two aircraft, both of you have to be transponder equipped because these two transponders, they communicate with each other and they decide, well, okay, if you go here, I'm gonna go there. That's how TCAS works in short. Um, and also TCAS does not give warnings at that low down. So if we come in and we have, let's say that there is an aircraft standing on the holding point with its uh, transponder activated, then what we will see is a yellow or sometimes red signal on the navigation display saying traffic, but you will never have any commands, okay? Because a TCAS command at that altitude would be very detrimental to safety. So TCAS obviously wouldn't work because no people have transponders on them and uh, that's not what this system is about, okay? So I want to really highlight here, guys, that the victims in this uh, horrible incident is obviously the victim itself, uh, but the, the family and friends of the victim, obviously, the crew that's involved, no one should ever have to be involved in an incident like this they are also victims in this. I feel very, very bad for the crew who was involved in this incident and I hope that they feel okay. And also, of course, the, the, the um, airport workers that had to come out and actually find the, the body after this person, of this, which must have been absolutely horrible. That's it, guys. If you have more questions about this, about the aircraft or airport security, um, there are some things that I cannot talk about, but some things that we can talk about. And this is why I have created the Mentor Aviation app. So if you want to hear about news stories that breaks like this one and you want to come in and discuss it in a positive and a constructive environment, well then get the app. It's completely free to download, guys. You can come in there, you can create your own profile with your own profile picture and you can go in and talk about whatever it is that you want. Having said that, I hope that you guys are safe and healthy out there. I hope that you take care of yourself. Have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Right guys, I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.